Monsters of every shape and form skulk in the corners of folklore throughout history. From dragons to Bigfoot, people's reports of strange creatures have fueled many legends, but have never been confirmed. Yet, with the invention of cameras and their integration into portable devices like mobile phones, there are increasing instances of people claiming to have captured footage of such monsters. As such, here are five mysterious creatures alleged to have been caught on camera. Dragons, thunderbirds and pterodactyl sightings have been a constant occurrence for hundreds of years. Such large winged creatures are even depicted in Stone Age paintings found in the Black Dragon Canyon in Utah leading some to suggest that these beings have lived alongside humans for even longer. Across various regions in Africa, the existence of a pterodactyl-like animal is a reality for many inhabitants. In 1923, the author Frank Melland collected reports of a dangerous, large-winged creature in his book In Witchbound Africa. He wrote of how local people and explorers in western Zambia, Angola and Congo had encountered a beast known as the Congomato. Congomato means overwhelmer of boats. This creature was feared because of how it was known for attacking small boats and seriously injuring passengers. In his book, Mellon describes showing illustrations of a pterodactyl to the native witnesses, which they readily identified as the Congomato. The existence for the pterodactyl is that the natives can describe it so accurately, unprompted, and that they all agree about it. They could not identify any other of the prehistoric monsters which I showed them. The natives do not consider it to be an unnatural thing like a demon, only a very awful thing like a man-eating lion or a rogue elephant, but infinitely worse. I have mentioned the swamps in northwestern Zambia as one of the reported haunts of the Congomato, and I must say that that place itself is the very kind of place in which such a reptile might exist, if it is possible anywhere. Far from only appearing in Mellon's work, references to the Congomato have been made elsewhere. In 1956, a British engineer by the name of J.P.F. Brown witnessed such a creature near Fort Rosebery in Zambia, which he described as looking prehistoric. The following year, a man was said to have been admitted to hospital in the same area with severe wounds to his chest caused by an animal. When asked to sketch a drawing of the beast which attacked him, the man drew a creature very similar to a pterodactyl. As for the rest of the world, America is not without its fair share of pterodactyl sightings. Jonathan Whitcomb, an author and cryptozoologist, has estimated that he has spoken to about a hundred credible witnesses of a pterodactyl-like creature from 1980 to 2009. Based on the frequency of these reports, Whitcomb has suggested that there are many others who do not contact any authority after a sighting for fear of humiliation. One case where the witness was not afraid to speak out occurred in 2002, when John Bowker reported seeing an extremely large, pterodactyl-like creature whilst flying his Cessna plane in a remote part of southwest Alaska. He described the beast as being similar in size to his own light aircraft. A scientist responded by saying that he had probably seen a Stella's sea eagle, the largest known species of eagle in the world. However, the pilot, who had been flying over Alaska for 22 years, insisted that what he saw was far larger and entirely brown in color. In his own words, You've got to realize that the thing I saw, I mistook for another Cessna coming up on me. This was big, big, big. I have seen maybe a hundred thousand eagles, and I know that this was an awful lot bigger than an eight-foot wingspan. As well as many eyewitness testimonies, there have been reports of such creatures being caught on camera. One piece of amateur footage comes from Idaho. Whilst its authenticity cannot be verified, it alleges to depict a pterodactyl-like creature flying above the tree line. 
One can argue that the wing movement of the supposed prehistoric creature looks too unnatural to be real, suggesting that the footage is a hoax. However, without further information, conclusions cannot be made. Regardless of its veracity, one cannot deny the prevalence of reports of large winged creatures across the world, from Africa to the USA to Asia. Does this prehistoric beast still roam the skies today? Since classical antiquity, tales of werewolves and wolfmen have abounded. The father of history, Herodotus, wrote of the Nuri, a tribe of people who resided in central Eurasia, who supposedly turned into wolves once a year for a few days. Other writers and philosophers of antiquity, including Pliny the Elder and Virgil, have also described cases of people turning into wolves. Usually, men transformed into werewolves in the same way that, in North America, men are said to become Wendigo, after having committed an act of cannibalism. After the classical era, the werewolf continued to enjoy a rich tradition, with King Harald I of Norway and Prince Vislav of Polosk of Belarus both considered to have been werewolves. In Scandinavia, fierce fanatical warriors would wear wolf skins into battle, believing that they would channel the energy of the beasts and become wolf-like. In 16th century France, there is the case of Gilles Garnier, a brutal murderer who was reputed to have turned into a werewolf and devoured the flesh of his victims. Several witnesses reported seeing him in his werewolf form in fields outside of the town, or as it is known in France, as a loup-garou. Garnier was eventually found guilty of crimes of lycanthropy and witchcraft. This was not the only time that werewolves and lycanthropy were included in witchcraft trials in early modern Europe. In Estonia and Livonia, between 1527 and 1725, 18 women and 13 men were convicted of having done harm as werewolves. It was believed that after having made a deal with a demon and committed an act of cannibalism on a specific victim, one was transformed into a bestial wolfman. Interest in and reports of werewolves have not diminished in the modern day. In 2014, a Bulgarian farmer recovered a skull from his land. It had been buried, locked in a box, and chained shut. When uncovered, it was found that the skull looked like that of a wolf, except for the enlarged cranium, which made it appear more akin to a human skull. Scientists have said that the strange remains most likely belong to a wolf afflicted with Paget's disease, which increases the size and shape of the sufferer's skull. However, speculation has continued, with no one able to fathom why the werewolf-like skull was locked away in a box. The farmer who discovered it has offered an explanation. Many of my neighbours are angry that I disturbed the werewolf. They say that I will be reborn as a werewolf. If that is now my fate, so be it. What is done, is done. As chilling as these remains may be, there have been reports that werewolves are still active in the present day. In 2014, there surfaced on the internet a video purportedly showing security camera footage of a bizarre wolf creature in the Brazilian town of São Gonçalo de Campos. Reports of the case stated that the beast plagued the town for several days. A local man described it as half man, half wolf. Another witness was a boy named Pingo. He described the creature as a black monster, looking more than five feet tall, hairy, and writhing non-stop. Whilst there are many testimonies which appear to describe the same thing, the authenticity of the video has been put into question by local news outlets. It was found that the footage predated the 2014 incident, and had first been published online in 2007. It seems to be the case that this older video was attached to the more recent events after the story broke. Regardless, the caption of the original video presents it as real, stating that it was recorded 
by security cameras on the full moon of Lent in 2007. As for the town of São Gonçalo de Campos, whilst the video may not be connected to their sightings, there was a genuine fear of the werewolf at the time. As sightings and encounters spread, local residents issued a self-imposed curfew, meaning that everyone was inside by 9pm. To them, a monstrous half-man, half-wolf did indeed stalk their streets. Monster animal sightings are surprisingly common in the United Kingdom. One such creature is known as the Beast of Cumbria. Described as a killer, the creature is infamous for ripping the heads off sheep. In 2016, a hiker claimed to have captured the elusive beast on camera. As recently as March 2018, a retired couple described encountering a big black thing thought to be the beast whilst on holiday at a nature reserve. Elsewhere in the British Isles is the creature of Cornwall. In August 2016, a truck driver contacted police after seeing a large, thorny-coloured big cat with black markings on its face and a dark tail. Whilst no creature was found, large feline footprints were identified at the scene. The prevalence of such sightings is thought to be a result of the Dangerous Wild Animal Act of 1976, which changed the law regarding how owners of big cats had to conform to strict regulations. Unable to conform to these new rules, many big cat owners across the UK released their specimens into the countryside. It is thought that numerous big cat sightings in the years since are the result of vagrant killer felines wandering the British countryside. In just five years, from 2010 to 2015, police recorded 455 such sightings in England, Wales and Northern Ireland. Big cats seem to be so widespread that they have even been spotted in urban areas. This video appears to show a big cat roaming the bins in Birmingham, the UK's second largest city. However, not all videos of peculiar large creatures in the UK can be so easily explained. Some elude label. The following piece of footage appears to depict a strange animal, described only as a monster. Filmed on the 14th of November 2007 by a traffic surveillance camera on the Wessex Way stretch of the A338 in the southwest of England, the monster crosses the central crash barrier, barely avoiding a collision with a car. Far from being caught in the car's headlights, the creature disappears into the shadows. At first glance, the creature looks like a deer. However, those with experience of the animals have disagreed with this conclusion. One commenter on the original upload, who describes themselves as a deer stalker from Norfolk, has stated that, I can definitely say it jumped elegantly like a deer would. However, look closely. Its hind legs are not inverted, as in having hocks like deer, dogs or horses. The hind legs are clearly like humans, i.e knees. Whatever it is, it has a shadow, is very large in status, and behaved like an animal would crossing a road. Although the footage is low quality, its hind legs are discernibly different from that of a deer. Also, its shoulders and upper body appear too broad, suggesting that it is a creature other than a deer. Those who have watched the video have provided plenty of colourful theories as to the creature's identity. Some have suggested that it is a skinwalker, others a wendigo, and some have stated that it may even be a feral human being. Aside from these suggestions, there is of course the conclusion that the footage is a fabrication, and that an image has been overlaid onto real traffic surveillance footage. All are possibilities, but whatever the case may be for the Wessex Way monster, it cannot be denied that there are indeed exotic beasts living in the British countryside. During the mid-1970s, Puerto Rico was allegedly in the grip of a malevolent beast. 
One of the earliest reports was in 1975 and came from the town of Mocha, where dead animals were found with all blood drained from their body and three mysterious puncture wounds on the chest. Experts at the time could not identify the puncture wounds as being of any known animal. Thus, reports of vampiric creatures raged wildly in the media. However, such cases were few in number, and the mysterious creature was subsequently regarded as bizarre, but ultimately little more than a localized curiosity for many years. In 1995, all that changed. In the town of Canavasas in Puerto Rico, 150 farm animals and pets were slaughtered in a single night. International news outlets were littered with the bloodied imagery of mutilated animals. Many initially thought it might have been the actions of a satanic cult. Thirty witnesses begged to differ. Each described a creature having swooped down from the sky to perform the massacre. After this, the attacks became more frequent. Hundreds more animals were butchered in the same way. By the end of the year, the beast was believed to have been responsible for more than a thousand animal deaths. More witnesses started to come forward, describing a four to five foot tall monkey-like creature with large oval red eyes, a spiny back and a serpentine tongue. Occasionally, it was described as having wings. Needing a name for this horrific beast, the Puerto Rican commentator Severo Perez coined the term chupacabra, meaning goat sucker. Yet, others saw something more sinister in the creature's actions. Many Puerto Ricans believed, and believe still, that the creature was the monstrous and Frankensteinish creation of the United States government. The following year, in 1996, the Chupacabra started to travel. It entered the USA. In a rural area of northwest Miami, 40 animals were found dead, drained of blood, and with the characteristic three puncture wounds on the chest. In the same year, a goat was found dead in southern Texas in the same manner. Reports also started to come from Argentina, Chile, Spain, Brazil, and even as far away as Ukraine. What had started in a small town in Puerto Rico in 1975 was, by the turn of the century, a global pandemic. During the Chupacabra's spread, however, reports of its appearance began to vary. No longer just a monkey-like creature, the mysterious beast was being described as something akin to a mangy dog. The following video, filmed from a helicopter, alleges to show a dog-like chupacabra running along a beach in Delaware. Understandably, it is easy to dismiss such things as simply being diseased wild dogs, which prey on domesticated animals as they are easier to hunt than wild ones. With the chupacabra phenomenon verging on mania in recent years, such videos are more likely wishful thinking than actual evidence. Yet, this is but one of the many aspects of the Chupacabra legend. Some videos have surfaced which appear to depict something far stranger and quite possibly humanoid. <laughs> Although its authenticity is highly questionable, many have described this as a chupacabra. Such reports of chupacabra push the boundaries of what we are willing to accept as supernatural. Many images, supposedly taken by those who have encountered this strange beast, even suggest an extraterrestrial element. Whilst some reports of chupacabra are compelling, such as the mass overnight animal slaughter in 1995, it seems that it is difficult to capture equally persuasive evidence on camera. Photos and videos are overwhelmingly blurry or unbelievable, or both. Regardless, with reports still flooding in after decades, the mystery of the chupacabra persists.
Tales of mysterious humanoid creatures have been reported all over the world. From Bigfoot in America to Yeti in Siberia. In the remote jungles of the Sumatra, people have been recorded witnessing a different type of unknown hominid, the Orang Pendek. Described as being about three feet tall, this ape-like biped is said to be covered in hair, with broad shoulders and a powerful chest. For many villagers in the area of Karinsi Seblat National Park, the creature's existence is indisputable. When describing their encounters with the Orang Pendek, villagers speak in awe of its strength, stating that it can uproot small trees and break thick vines with its bare hands. Certainly, many Orang Pendek sightings have occurred in the area of the National Park. The landscape there comprises dense jungles and an active volcano, making it an ideal location for a hitherto unknown creature to live in mystery. The director of the park, when interviewed in 1993, confessed that the park had been overwhelmed with reports of the Orang Pendek. We now have too many sightings from all over the National Park. It is always the same animal, always the same description. I think there is a strong possibility that we have an unknown animal here. Debbie Marta, a former London journalist, moved to Sumatra to discover more about the Orang Pendek. A skeptic of Bigfoots and other large cryptid apes, she was initially unsure as to what to believe about the Orang Pendek. However, one day, everything changed. In her own words, it walked straight across the valley in front of me, 30 meters away. So close, I didn't expect it. I certainly didn't expect to see it so clearly. It was walking between two trees, vegetation to about hip level. This gorgeous, graceful, very strongly built primate, a big ape, walking out of a legend and into broad daylight, lit up by the sun. If I'd seen it concealed in undergrowth, I could have said, well, I saw something. But I didn't see something. I saw an Orang Pendek. During her time in Sumatra, she has collected hundreds of eyewitness testimonies of the elusive animal, from villagers and visitors alike. All of them are extremely consistent in their descriptions of the Orang Pendek. When she has shown pictures of different types of apes to the witnesses, they all reported that the Orang Pendek's face was not only more human-like, but also more handsome than typical apes. Based on the reports she collected, Marta has found that the creature is typically very shy, and when sighted tends to run away, always on two legs. Whilst quick to run away, that does not mean that the Orang Pendek is altogether elusive. Aside from the vast number of eyewitness testimonies, there are also instances of it having been caught on camera. Uploaded to the internet in 2017, the following video was captured by dirt bike riders in Sumatra. It alleges to show an orang pandek. The creature in the video does indeed appear to match many of the descriptions given by eyewitnesses. It is small and fast, walks on two legs, and flees when sighted. Could this be tangible evidence of the existence of a new species of ape, one which walks on two legs alongside humans? Debbie Martyr claims to have seen the creature several times, and continues to research the jungle by placing cameras in the trees in the hope of capturing a photograph of it. As for her credibility, aside from her work in tracing the Orang Pendek, she also directs her efforts to help save the endangered Sumatran tiger, and has been awarded the prestigious Order of the British Empire for her achievements. 
Aside from Marta, there are other experts studying the Orang Pendek. Between 2001 and 2003, scientists analysed hairs and casts of footprints claimed to belong to the mysterious primate, retrieved by three British men who were travelling in Sumatra. Dr David Chivier, a primate biologist at the University of Cambridge, has confirmed their authenticity. The cast of the footprint taken was definitely an ape, with a unique blend of features from gibbon, orangutan, chimpanzee, and human. From further examination, the print did not match any known primate species, and I can conclude that this points towards there being a large, unknown primate in the forests of Sumatra. With respected experts and journalists gaining more of an interest into researching the creature, it may only be a matter of time before the Orang Pendek steps from the pages of folklore and into documented scientific reality. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to subscribe for more of the paranormal. And don't forget you can enable notifications by clicking the bell icon to ensure that you never miss a video. If you cannot wait until my next video, why not check out the one suggested on screen now. Remember, the more you know, the more there is to fear.